No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm back with an old friend, <laughs> Diego Lozan. What's up, man? How you feeling, Doug? I'm good. I feel good. It's good to be back here, man. Yeah, it's great to have you back in here. So uh, I've, I've been wondering what <laughs> life was like for you lately, and I was actually hitting you up, trying to get on the phone with you a couple weeks ago. We didn't end up doing it because we're both space cases, <laughs> but I'm glad that we're in here so we yeah. can actually have a conversation for yeah, the world yeah. to see. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been doing really good, man. Um, Probably wasn't doing that good last time I saw you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how how long ago was that? When was the last time we saw each other? I like, mean, I think it was either twenty. I think it was twenty nineteen. I think, I it think was, it's when you yeah when you came to the the exactly. house. Yeah, I was so messed up, bro. Okay, so describe where you were at in your life at that point, because at that point you had decided that the L.A. life was not for you, so you moved to the O.C. basically, mm -hmm. and you had a house and you were doing yeah your like thing. the Inland Empire close to the O.C. Okay, you kind of like back where I'm from, but. It's crazy. You were, um when you had come over, I was I was pretty down bad. Like, and you could even see in the video. I've seen it a couple of times. I'm not there. Like, I look like a walking zombie, and it's crazy. Yeah, that was probably one of the the worst. Not the worst, but that was a bad time, definitely. I remember you being in the uh, the G wagon with Chad Tepper, and you were both smoking two menthol <laughs> cigarettes each in your mouth. Two yeah, menthol cigarettes. And I remember after that. I went to London, so it was definitely 2019. I went to yeah. London, and a girl bummed me a fucking menthol cigarette, and I tried to hit it, and it just gave me such insane <laughs> flashbacks to being in the G-Wagon <laughs> with so much menthol smoke in yeah. my face that I, I have not been able to smoke a menthol cigarette nah, since. they're disgusting. They're yeah. disgusting. Yeah, I think we, if we're smoking like five at a time. Yeah, that, that just is an indicator of how, how far bad things have gotten. <laughs> okay, so tell me, what where were you at at that point in your life that made you want to like leave the downtown LA life and, and, and move? to Good the question. OC or whatever. I, I think what would ultimately led to me having to leave was was probably financial stability. stability. Financial stability, definitely. I was going through a rough time. Mm. Um, uh, I wasn't broke by any means. I definitely probably had more money, I guess, than the average person would in a case. But to what I was used to was, you know, if that makes a little bit of sense. Well, because at the height of everything with you in 2017 or 2018, whenever, mm -hmm. like, your your they reached its climax, you had, like, multiple apartments, right? Yeah, and, and the, the thing that went into the multiple apartments, it wasn't, like, a flex, like, oh, look, I'm having all these. I kept getting evicted. Mm -hmm. Like, I had one, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to move to a nicer one, and I let my mom stay at that one, got evicted, um, so I had to get a new one. So and then I moved out of there because I got evicted. Then moved to levels. So that's where like the multiple apartments. It was just I kept getting evicted. But you were paying like ten grand oh, a yeah, month for yeah. one of the apartments. I remember at you telling me at levels. It was probably eight to anywhere uh, between eight to ten thousand. You know, and that just that plus the the money I was spending on drugs. You know, that combined like really put a dent. Um, in, in and everything. you were basically like cycling girls in and out of the crib like <laughs> nonstop because I remember random girls DMing me and basically saying like, "Hey, I'm outside of Lil Zan's house right now," and he's like, "Fell asleep, so he won't he won't let us up in the elevator. <laughs> oh, no. Can you get us up?" I'm like, "I don't know what the <laughs> thing I'm gonna do to be able to control this." Yo, let me give him you. a call real quick. Yo, I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Man. Oh, that was fine. Yeah. I mean, but I remember trying to like be like, "Nah, but you can come chill yeah. with us." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, come yeah. On there crib. you go. There you go. <laughs> Yo, he probably got a couple from that. Um, I don't think I did. I was like really <laughs> trying to go through my memory to be like, "Did you?" Any Lil Xan <laughs> leftovers? But I don't think I did. But. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, I would. Uh, man, there's so many stories of me leaving my friends down there. You had to like uh, call up, yeah, to even get. And some people would sneak up there. They would take the stairs, and I would just get some weird fans at the door. Wow, that really? was kind of sketchy. So you, because I, I feel like you're someone who really went from like not having. Sh to just being famous, having everybody know you were, again, money coming mm -hmm. in all the time, and it happened so abruptly that, so like, quick. the average person that has that kind of glow up is not ready for it, but you were, like, mega not ready for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the way you put that. Like, the normal person wouldn't be ready for it, but I super was not ready for it. Uh, You know, that, that type of, whatever it is, that type of fame, money, whatever, uh, that will affect anybody at any age, you know, and especially... When you're so young and impressionable, it'll affect you the most. Um, yeah, it was it was insane. You know, I didn't know how to deal with it. And I think a lot of what went into uh, to my drug habits was was caused by, you know, the anxiety, the stress of mm. of just everything happening so quick. And all these people now want to, you know, interact with me in, in certain ways. And, and I wasn't used to that. So 
I it would I'm not gonna blame that on it, but obviously it it played into like my uh, my drug addiction. It worked beautifully with it, right? Because that's one thing I always say is that a lot of people, including like myself, at a certain point, mm-hmm. you're basically doing as much drugs as you can afford. Yeah, and that's you know? that's the problem, and that that goes for anybody that has money in any industry. You know, you have this money, you have uh, uh, an addictive personality per se. And and you just are gonna spend it. And what my my biggest problem was, I wasn't taking those like fake whatevers on. You know, those are the cheap ones on the street. I would spend the extra lot or whatever to uh, to get the real stuff. You know, prescriptions from like that were real basically. Cause mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I just was not. And that's where all my money went basically. Cause this is kind of like the early days of us realizing that there was fentanyl and a lot of pills. Yeah, it was a weird time. It's not like how it is now. It, it was like. You didn't really know, you know, you knew it was something else kind of, and it was bad, but the fentanyl epidemic was just like starting. Because I was, I watched a little documentary last night for some reason that was like seven years old, and it's from where I grew up in New Hampshire, and it's yeah. basically just like a detox that they were running for people who were all fucked up on drugs, and mm-hmm. they, they in the documentary, the, the, the person, the interviewer asked the staff, they say like, what's the worst drug that you guys deal with? And they're just like, oh, heroin. Yeah, and they there's no mention of fentanyl. No mention of fentanyl. None. It's weird, right? Seven years ago, there was no mention of it, yeah. which is fucking crazy. It's because cr- soon after that, it became like the thing to it talk about. It just exploded, and, and now it's this big epidemic. And and now every person getting treated in rehab, it's like, oh, fentanyl. It's an easy question, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like, why are they in here, fentanyl? I, I I saw something too. Um, that I don't know if it was seven years ago, but they were they were mentioning certain drugs, and fentanyl didn't come up either. And I was like, that's crazy. It is like a fairly new big thing i guess you know but it's been around for uh for a while i think right yeah Cause, but i remember when little peep died like somebody had yeah. to kind of explain it to me yeah you know and and that's totally understandable i think that was a, a big wake-up call for a lot of people like that you know this this fentanyl is is insane you know mm. it was horrible but okay so before you were famous how much drugs were you doing on average were, mm-hmm. you, were you still fully in it like getting fucked up every day or did you not really have the money to be doing it every day yeah. or when you have normal person <laughs> requirements in yeah. life like going to work or some shit it can be yeah. kind of hard to hold that down yeah um i would say i was i was dabbling with it probably uh, like three years before you know it would be almost like a, a weekend thing or sporadic. Right. it was very sporadic it wasn't a consistent like every day i take this and i go through withdrawals it was like just every once in a while it was like a social thing i guess mm-hmm. and uh and as you know a year went by another year i got a little bit worse and worse and then boom you know hit with all that that stuff at once um i was like well now i can afford this even better and I'm stressed out all the time, and I have a lot of anxiety. So you got travel, yeah. you got to be on tour, you got to go yeah. in front of all these fucking people. All of a sudden, yeah. you have like a real reason to Man, do it. It's so crazy because looking back, like I can perform very easily now. I love performing; it's 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 dope. But I would almost throw up before I had to go do a show. Like I would be in the bathroom, like chucking up, like so nervous. Uh, even just before like club appearances, I was like not ready. Um, but that's where, you know, Xanax and all that came into play. It helped out a lot. Mm, definitely. So, but I mean, I heard you like citing some pretty ridiculous statistics of like what you were taking at a certain point where you said you were taking, I think, 20 Vicodins and 10 Zans in a day. That was, I was doing more than that. Yeah. That Like that is mind blowing to me because I always talk about like, oh yeah, I had this period of time where I was doing Xanax. I mm. think like a couple of times I might've take two bars in a day. <laughs> That's which, crazy though. Yeah. But, and, and that had me like fucked no, up, no, like yeah. no idea what was to going someone on. Someone with no tolerance. That, yeah. yeah. That, that might as well be it right there. Yeah. But you just like kind of let it spiral out of control at yeah, a certain point. And, huh? and that that's what le- uh, what led into the darkest time I would say in my life was when uh I had never like smoked um perks and stuff like that, you know, but the last uh 3 months when I was addicted, I had started that uh, that tin for that whole tweaker. How do you even get into that mentality? You know how I got into that cuz I was always like, "Oh, I'm not going to be that bad, you know, when I'm over here." But um I was hanging around the wrong people. Mm-hmm. And I learned it. I saw what that they were doing. And it's like the the black and white case study of just, uh, you know, peer pressure, not peer pressure, but just your, you, you know, bad friends had it around. And I was like, oh, what's that? You know, and then got into it and just led me down. Uh, I was hanging around bad people. Yeah. yeah. Especially when your mind is so soft from the fact that you're already getting fucked up. And then yeah. if you're around people who are doing that kind of stuff. But so did you get really bad with smoking perks? And, and was it that much more powerful? Were you able to like actually, was it that much more yeah, intense than yeah. just popping them? 
Oh, yeah, that's that's what I think led me ultimately to it, too, is, uh, you know, you stop, you, you build a tolerance pretty quickly, especially when you're taking that amount of drugs. Um, yeah, I built up a tolerance and, you know, the bad people I was hanging around with, thank God they're not a part of my life anymore. Um, they were like, oh, yeah, this this gets you higher. You know, you got to just smoke. And I'll, I tried it. And yeah, it did. It, it like broke through that that first initial like uh, that just, you know, ugh, like I was high again. Because every drug you do, you kind of get you, used you, to you, it after a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, and then that's what leads you to taking more, and then it just spirals. But um, yeah, you know that's that's basically how. Okay, so so was that after the house that we're talking about in the Cor- IE or whatever? Yeah, that was after. Um, what it ended up happening um was yeah, you saw me at the Corona house. I would leave that house, and and um I would go live with uh I would pay rent at my other friend's house, and I I just wanted to be in LA. I just it was a roommate situation. And that's where I got really bad back. I was, so I was back in L.A., you know, mm-hmm. back in, uh, in like, like the thick of all the, the stuff. And and at that house is where it would get really bad. And it was only the last three months that I was smoking them and stuff. And uh, I had ran out, obviously, in the middle of the night. Um, and I was just rummaging through like the tin foil and stuff. And I looked at myself in the mirror and like, I, I don't know if it was just me, but I could start seeing like the lines, you know, when you get like real skinny or like. You know, when you see someone like that, like a tweaker kind of, and I was like, oh, I can't go out like this. You know, like this is, this is, I've been bad before, but this is like really bad. Like I'm going to die like very, very soon. Um, And I, I went cold turkey and I had um like a few seizures. That's because that's pretty common, right? If you go yeah, cold turkey off of opiates. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, off of uh, benzos. Right. Okay. It's, it's actually kind of crazy. Uh, You can, for the most part, go cold turkey off of opiates and you won't really have too bad of, I mean, besides withdrawals, obviously, but the benzos and alcohol, I wasn't on alcohol, but just benzos and alcohol, you get um, the seizures for if you just go cold turkey. They want you to, like, wean off it, but, you know, it was such a wild time in my life, obviously. I was just like, I'm done. So uh, how bad did the seizures affect you? Really bad, really bad, and it sucked because uh, my family had to see them and, you know, my girl at the time, uh, and it was another, it was just a, a, a clusterfuck of just wake-up calls back-to-back, you know, it was like, all right, I just survived uh, a few seizures, like, back-to-back. Back. They they were scary, you know? The thing about a seizure is, like, you you black out. You're not there. You're just there one second, and then you wake up, hopefully, you know? And I, I just woke up. My head hurt really bad, like, like the worst it had ever hurt. And you're crying because you, you're, like, the best way I can describe it is, like, you're as crazy. I mean, uh, not crazy. You're as sad as, like, a human being could, like, feel. Like, you, like I think I was, like, crying for, like, my mom, you know? It was, like, mm. real, real, like, fragile emotions right there. And uh, and it took a couple weeks to to even just bounce back from the seizures. And right. Yeah, that's, you know, it was crazy. Damn. And so, like, during this time period, though, did you totally lose touch with making music? Or, like, what, what was your actual day-to-day like for yeah. the most part? That's, that's a good question. You know, I did lose touch a lot with with music. I had some projects that were planned, obviously got scrapped and stuff. I had a lot of plans, but I, I just felt like, well, one, I, I just felt like I couldn't continue. The, like, I was going to die, you know? Like, like anything I was saying on the internet, just like, screw all that. Like, I, I had to take some time off to to get better and if I even wanted to think about pursuing music again, you know, like, yeah, of course, I love music, and, and I'm doing that right now. You know, I'm getting back into it. Um, but if I would have continued to just try to push music during that time, it wouldn't have felt right. Mm. You know? Yeah, because it's pretty crazy. Like, you have this period of time where you blew up. All of a sudden, everybody knows who you are. And, I mean, like, the public tide of opinion just kind of, ch- like, swung to the other side real mm. quick where – it became like YouTubers just wanted to make videos about mm-hmm. you, just like documenting your downfall or yeah. whatever. And it's like people love to do that. If they see somebody who is is becoming successful or rich and mm-hmm. they feel like that person doesn't deserve it, or as soon as really as, as soon as they realize that people are gonna click, that yeah. people are gonna watch if yeah. they make a video saying something negative about somebody, that shit just kicks into overdrive and yeah. and like it was weird for me as somebody who was friends with you and had known you from before that where it very quickly became like everybody online was just like taking every opportunity to kick you when you were down and mm. any little thing like oh some guy yells at you in a parking lot for the average rapper maybe this isn't even a story or it doesn't hit any of the blog pages or whatever but with you it got really like amplified and 
everybody wanted to talk about everything yeah. negative that was In going on way, and, and nothing positive. You know, nothing, if, if there yeah. was anything good going on for you, it was just totally <laughs> I, ignored. I'm trying right? to like think of like one of my more positive stories. <laughs> I can't think of one really. Yeah, at a certain point, <laughs> maybe the it felt Cheeto like, thing was like right, lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like <laughs> funny at best, or but like for the most part, it was just a yeah. big magnifying glass yeah. on anything. Yeah, negative, it, was, you know? it was a lot. Yeah, to the left. Um, you know what? During that, like, well, obviously the Tupac stuff the was Tupac was thing, before, yeah. like, anything else, you know, it was the first catalyst of hate that could be, you know, garnered to me. It was like, uh, and obviously that was the stupidest thing. I was young when I said that. Um, you know, I wish I could go back and redo that, but it's in the past. But as far as, like, all these YouTubers and stuff, when, when I first started seeing these wave of, like, videos, like, you know, documenting the downfall of what they believe is my downfall, it really m- fucked with me. It really messed with me on a scale that I hadn't felt before. Like, yeah, I'd gotten death threats from the the Tupac thing. Trust me, I dealt with a lot of stuff from that. Death threats, all types of stuff. But it's still kind of like a joke because at the end of the day, it's like, how mad could you really be about me just saying that I didn't like a rapper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this this felt like way obviously more personal, you know, like it was attacking like my character. I I felt like it it was obviously providing uh, just false narratives, false everything. But um, and it it ultimately uh, got to me so bad to where I called a fifty one fifty on myself. And uh, so explain how that works. It's like fifty one fifty. You call like uh, the paramedics, the cops, whatever, and you say, you know, like I I'm feeling like I'm gonna hurt myself or something, and then they'll come and get you and uh, put you in a hospital for three days, monitored, um, sometimes longer. But my my deal was that. They would release me in three days if I uh, went straight to rehab. Okay. And I went straight to rehab after that. And that's when things finally, like it was my fourth time in rehab, but uh, that's when things finally like started to go in a more positive direction for me. So when you go to rehab, how long were you going for? It was, you know, it was the detox part. It's not the full rehab. I did a couple weeks of the rehab. Well, I'll get into it. Like I went to um, this detox in, in, was it like Huntington Beach, right? Newport Beach, um, and shout out to uh, Scott Storch and Steve LaBelle, because mm. uh, they really helped me get sober. Like, without them, really? I don't know if I'd be sober. And just out of the goodness of their heart, because you yeah. weren't doing business with them. Yeah, anything, no, right? no, no business, nothing like that. Is uh, I had a, a mutual friend that, that um, well, obviously I know Scott a little bit, but uh, my mutual friend knew Steve LaBelle, and they own this rehab called uh, the Heavenly Center, mm. uh, abbreviated, which is THC for weed right. and stuff. It's like that... They're trying that whole Cali sober wave where you can, uh, like, you could smoke weed in my detox, which I thought was crazy. You, you know? have to be in there for a little while before you get, like, yeah. weed privileges. Yeah, yeah. Like, detox, um, you could only hit, like, the uh, cartridges, you know, and, and it's after a five-day blackout period is what they call it. Um, yeah, and, and they had sent me to that. I spent, I believe, 30 or 31 days, which is a long time for detox. Um, and then I I left and went to two weeks of the actual their program but i'd left um but i yeah i've maintained good like everybody thought that me leaving the rehab early was like a sure case that i was gonna fail again mm. um and i kept telling them and i understand where they're coming from i would believe that too but i i just felt like i i could do it you know mm. and um and it's you know i'm here i'm sober was it weird being little xan in detox or in rehab because yeah. whenever you hear about rappers or, or celebrities going to that kind of thing you just wonder like what is what is this like when everybody in there mm-hmm. knows who you are and meanwhile you don't know any of them they're just yeah. random people to you but they yeah. probably are all looking at you and kind of watching your every move and oh, shit right yeah because the one i i went to it was two people to a room it was a nice one it was a really nice one but um yeah uh everybody it was weird because everybody did know who i was obviously um, they were nice. No, I, I didn't have to deal with, with any, any weird people or anything, but I, you know, it did take away from kind of the getting away from everything, you know, cause obviously you go there to escape. It did diminish that a little bit, but yeah, it, it was just more of a weird, you know, thing. I, I'm so used to like, to everywhere I go, I, I will get recognized by still by like one or two people. So I'm just pretty used to it. Yeah, that's that's got to be a weird part about being you is that you still just kind of can't escape that, right? Yeah, You're so recognizable. Yeah, it's it's funny because even I don't know six how many years we've been I've been doing this. Uh, it's died down a little bit, but it's you would think like oh I'll, I can go out and, and it could be a cool. no I still go out and I still get like recognized like quite a bit. I obviously know why I'm very recognizable, um, but you would I would have thought it would have died down a little bit during like the the hiatus and all that, but if it kind of stayed like a level. 
you know, of, of people coming up and asking for pictures. But I guess that's kind of my whole life, you know? Yeah, you got to get yeah. used to it at a certain point. It just sucks when it is like it's a It's a curse and thing. a gift, bro. Yeah. And a lot of times it's more of a curse, you know? Like, for instance, uh, I was at the post office. I live in Lake Forest in the OC now. And, you know, if you if anybody knows Irvine, they know that that's a safe neighborhood. That's a very safe place in OC. Uh, I was at the post office uh, trying to get my uh, a new passport. And uh, some random, like, this this didn't make it on the internet or nothing. I thought it was because he was videotaping. Uh, this random white guy just gets out of his car and tries to fight me, bro. And he's like, and he's like are you Lil Xan? I'm like, what? like, I'm not saying anything. And he's like, you're bad for the youth. You're bad for, <laughs> like, you could tell he didn't know anything about me because he these are, like, weird uh, insults. Like, I was like, what? And then he was like, I'm going to kill you. And, I'm, and he's, like, my height, so I'm not really tripping that much. And I'm just like, what is your problem, dude? And he gets back in his car and he's like, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to kill you. You know, that doesn't happen very often, but it happens enough to where I'm like, what the heck is going on? Did he actually follow you? No, no, uh, he didn't. But I was just like, man, what is this guy's issue? You know, like. Well, you're like a magnet for people with mental health issues. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, right? They're like, I, I feel the vibe, man. Wow. You or know? just clout chasing ass people in but general, But no, the you know? big part about that is he was videotaping, so I was sure it was like, oh, this is going to be, I don't know what he's planning on with this footage. I don't know what it's going to do, but. I was for sure that that was going to be like some viral stuff. Did you see it online at all? No, no, it didn't end up anyway. I think it was because he started calling me some racial slurs. And I think he didn't want that video out because so, yeah, he screwed himself. Maybe over. he was just so fried that he couldn't even figure out how to like <laughs> upload it to TikTok <laughs> yeah, or right? how to like get it to TMZ yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he still maybe it'll still be there one day. You might see it. Wow. So, OK, once you like really start to get clean, though, because I I'd seen you like kind of trying to get clean or at trying, least trying yeah. to moderate your drug use over the years. But once you finally really got clean, what was that like? Like, you know, life life's a lot different <laughs> when you're sort of seeing things clearly, right? Yeah. Like, obviously, I smoke a lot of weed. Um <clears throat> I don't think that's bad. Um, I don't drink hardly at all. If it is, it's very social, very occasional, and it's not me getting all fucked up and shit. But um, yeah, in the beginning, obviously, you have to go through some intense withdrawals for like uh, maybe a month or two, depending on your usage. Mm -hmm. That was uh, the hardest part was just the cold sweats. The, the you know Anybody who's gone through withdrawals know how horrible that is. And then uh, it got easy, man. It, you know, it, it's just it, you take it um, one day at a time. Mm. One day at a time. If you just do it like that and, and fill your day with activities instead of, you know, being cooped up in the house. That was another big problem I used to have where I would just I'm still a homebody, but providing yourself with just healthy, you know, exercise and activities, all the stuff they tell you, man. I've mm. been uh, been trying to stick to it. You know, what kind of exercise you do? None. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they tell me to do. Though. No. I need to start, man. Right. No, definitely. That could, that could help a lot. Like just just sweating and like feeling your body be sore. I tried though when you I know? was yeah when I was in 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 the detox. They had a little gym. I was like pretending like I was doing something. You know, I was like right. Yeah. See, I'm not gonna lie. Like back in the day, 2017, 2018, whatever. Like I remember like really wishing that you would get clean, but it's kind of feeling like. It just wasn't happening. Like, you mm -hmm. just seemed like you had been so fucked up for so long. And I remember you telling me about being, like, really young and having a headache. And, like, you know, I don't want to put it on, like, your parents or whatever. But, like, people in your life saying, you know, here, take this mm -hmm. pain pill. Take whatever. Like, and that that was, like, normal to you as a young kid. And it, it kind of just felt like I don't know what it's going to take to make Zan be able to break out of this. Yeah. And and that was obviously, yeah, that, that was bad. It, that was echoed by... A lot of people that were like, there's no way he can, like, get out of this hole that he's in. Like, he is, like, look at him. You know, he's so far gone. Um, I had to want to change. That That's the biggest part is in the past when, like like you said, you would see me attempting to, or, you know, bullshitting, trying to be sober online and stuff. I, I was, like, tricking myself into thinking I wanted to get sober, but it wasn't, like, genuine. It wasn't. I, I, it was just a trick. Like I wanted, I wanted to be sober, but I wasn't committed fully. It, it all, it all changed after I had those seizures and that like, it was, it was a near death experience, you know, really kind of messed me up for that time. Um, was that your rock bottom? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe a couple of days before, but definitely, yeah, that's my rock bottom was, was the seizures, you know, it was a, the biggest wake up call. I almost died, you know, mm. and, and seizures are, are scary. Like that's how we lost juice world. You know, that's all I could think of when I would have those seizures is like, man, bro, please. I just like, I just don't want to die. You know, I'm like so scared. And I, it was a bad, I was rock bottom. Yeah. Damn.
Yeah. So how long how long have you been actually sober for now, and have you slipped up at all, or has it been clean so for the when I was first of starting off, like I would go sober for like a week, two weeks, slip up, you know, obviously, uh, it only happened once or twice, but I've been sober now for a year and I believe six months. Wow, that's yeah. dope. Yeah, thank you. What's like the biggest changes in life though? Like, I, like, like, what do you see clearly now that was kind of a mystery or a blur to you earlier on? Yeah, man, the past, it feels like it, it went like that, you know, it was so, it felt so quick because anybody obviously that's uh, partakes in, in drugs and all that will know it, it feels like it speeds up time in a sense, you know, it just, if on Zans you're one place and then you don't even know how you ended up at this place and you're at this place. Uh, now, um, like it's, it's just, I like, I tell people this, I wish I could be this person back then. Mm. And, you know, I wish I could, if, if I was this person back then, guaranteed, None of that crazy stuff would have happened. Things would have been handled in a more mature and a proper manner, uh, you know. But we can't change the past. Obviously, I feel very more mature. I feel way more stable. Um, I I feel healthier. I probably could eat healthier and stuff like that. But that's a whole another journey. You want a fast food <laughs> diet for the most part? No, no. I actually eat at home a lot more, but I still dabble in the fast food. Not like how I used to be. I used to be mm. terrible with that, you know. Uh, I just overall I feel really, really good mentally, you know. And there's still a lot of room for for growth and improvement, obviously. But compared to what I was, yeah, I feel really good. Definitely, were like were the girls and the drugs like do those kind of go hand in hand, or like has getting clean meant that you aren't necessarily like hanging out with a different chick every night? Or there was a a couple that I could think of now that definitely I shouldn't have been hanging around that were were giving me some stuff they shouldn't have been giving me. You know what I mean? Um, there was a few bad eggs. I like girls, man. You know, I, I still <laughs> like, like man, that's not the bad thing, you know. I, right, yeah. It's not as crazy as it used to be, definitely. It's definitely not as crazy as it used to be. But I, I still, you know, I still like girls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe you, for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's all about, like, when I think about, the time period of my life before I stopped doing coke and zans and mm -hmm. shit, it was like the girls, like it just seems like another drug. It's another drug. It's just another thing yeah. that I was chasing. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, you know, getting fucked up on Xanax on like Friday, Saturday, and then it would be Sunday night. Yeah. And I would be like texting and DMing every yeah. fucking girl on my phone. Like yeah. like it was like I was I knew I couldn't get fucked up anymore because I had to do interviews the next day yeah. or whatever. But I'm meanwhile hitting up every single girl because yeah. you're just chasing good feelings yeah. in general, yeah. right? I a hundred percent agree with that. Like they they do they go hand in hand with the drugs and they probably don't help. You know, you just gotta choose the type of people you're around, you know. Um that that's all it is. But what I'll say about for people like me and you, man, bro, I let me put it this way. I did not get very much pussy in high school you know i wasn't the cool kid i wasn't i, I relate to this yeah, I, yeah you know i wasn't the cool kid at all um i had a couple of girlfriends they were whatever but yeah. i'm not it, it wasn't that i got zero yeah. ass but yeah, I was, it was like you know it's a little bit once you actually get success and you have random like i, I just remember at a certain point mm -hmm. random girls would be dming me and wanting me to have threesomes with yeah. them and their friend and they don't even know me they've mm -hmm. never met me and they want to fuck me with their friend, yeah. and they'll just come over. It's not like I have to work. <laughs> no, for no, you don't got to. That is <laughs> way different than like, oh, I go to the bar and I like I'm trying to meet girls and I yeah. get a girl's number and I'm texting her and I gotta yeah. like hang out with her and shit like that. Like the the level of like <laughs> attention that you get once you really start popping that, is way. And different. that's what I'm and that's what I'm saying was like you get it. Like a lot of people obviously unfortunately won't get it, but you know when you're put in like a position like that. It's you don't even have to do anything. It comes to you. Like imagine like that, you know, like to like anybody would love that, bro. Like that's. But uh, it's hard to manage it. But it is, and that and it starts. It'll start uh, fucking with you mentally too. You know, mm. I believe in that too. And I even remember like having that scenario, but the girls would be like, "Oh, hey, I have these Zans, or I have this yeah. Molly, I mm. have like whatever." So girls. then it really starts yeah. going hand in yeah. hand, where it's like, "Oh, I'm laying in bed on a fucking Thursday night trying to just be." <laughs> clean and like not get fucked up and it's but like, you have these these beautiful girls hitting yeah. you up it, yeah and i don't have to go out and socialize i can just have them come over and they're going to give me drugs that take <laughs> care of the fact that i'm you know kind of in my head yeah like it's, it, you couldn't ask for like a yeah more like perfect situation like that <laughs> <laughs> right definitely um, yeah you know it's this is crazy. We live a crazy life. Man. Especially when you first start popping too, because mm -hmm. that's when like there's really just this massive 
flood of yeah. people that have never seen or yeah. heard of you before and, and they want to be around you yeah and you have that clout. it's such a foreign and new feeling too to someone like like me it's like yeah i had friends i, I was all cool, like whatever but like now i have hundreds of women like literally hundreds uh and then hundreds of just weird dudes trying to hang around me and then you know, this and person, they have drugs, and they have drugs. Yeah, the weird dudes always have drugs. <laughs> the the girls always have drugs, and, and, and especially in L. A. Uh, man, L. A. is a, a whole different playground when it comes to that. Especially back then, when you know, two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen, it was very, very much Xanax culture and, and everything. Sometimes I wonder if people are still getting fucked up as crazy as people were at yeah, that time. At that because time. Well, maybe I'm, we would know. I'm not close to it anymore, yeah. so I don't know. But I remember like talking to people who would come to the store and they'd be talking about going to like Xanax parties and literally just Whoa. I never heard that's a, like a party just like Yeah, like a, like a house party where everybody in the whole fucking party is it's just like taking Zans. <laughs> and I'm just like Oh fuck! Like that's like another <laughs> level of this yeah, shit. Yeah, I haven't been to no Zam parties, so shit. There's another level, man. Yeah, I don't want to be at a party where like nobody can remember what's yeah. going on. That seems like just a guaranteed yeah, way to get you in a bad spot. Yeah, and you know that this shit that with Xanax is it makes people so angry. You know, there's like and then they there's just they get angry for no reason. Yeah, I'm you've had to deal with so many, especially when you had the store. I oh yeah, yes. I know why you moved, bro. That I, I, was insane, bro. <laughs> yeah, off Melrose. I, I yeah, it's insane. Well, it's crazy because it's like. Like around that same time for both of us, you just have this like glow up, and then at a certain point, it just like levels off, mm -hmm. starts to go down a bit, and then you're just kind of like, okay, how do I hold on to this? What do I try to turn this into? Like, how do I kind of find a way to still like get value out of this? And like mm -hmm. for me, it it's just you know I threw myself into just doing interviews, and like we got rid of the store, and I just got yeah. really focused on it, doing interviews, and like building up was, different hosts. So it was on the almost like a distraction, the store for you to. It was. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like a normal store, you know. It was. I mean, if I had work. this space or something like this at the time, so I was able to actually like do content in a controlled way, Where then the, just, the store yeah. might have been cool because mm -hmm. I was just meeting so many people, and it was great because it was really raw in that sense. Yeah. But then at a certain point, it became like just an annoyance. People so just, would just walk in yeah. in the back, bro. I, like, I saw some of the crazy shit that happened with it. Someone come in with a gun, right? Yeah, a couple times. Uh, yeah, like a couple <laughs> times, bro. Like back to back. Yeah, Melrose is, if, for anybody that doesn't know, Melrose is a crazy street in uh, in Los Angeles, man. Yeah, and I, I'll still stop by Desto Dub's store from time to time because mm. he actually has my old store now. And, you know, he'll have a bunch of people hanging out and it seems cool and stuff, but his shit is kind of like more at a manageable level. Yeah. Whereas for us at a certain point, it became just like a, you guys a got so target big, for you know, bullshit. Yeah. I, I remember, man, I remember like the first time I discovered No Jumper, uh, I was like such a, uh, it sounds so cheesy. I was such a big fan. I, I was like, this is cool. Cause you were documenting like shit. I was interested in like you had the X interview and, and you know, some of the early ones, Puya and all that. And I was like, this is special, man. Like, you know, this is different. Like, there's a lot of other, I don't know what you call it, like, sources, whatever they call it. But this is, like, it was a part of the culture. It wasn't just there documenting it. Like, No Jumper was, like, a part of, like, the whole SoundCloud thing. Like, you can't almost have SoundCloud without, like, the No Jumper aspect of it. Well, it was crazy for me because you were the first rapper that blew up. And then I realized, like, oh, I had taken a photo with you outside San of, like, Diego. A, a fucking Bones show yeah. or, like, some random-ass show. Diego, yeah. And just realizing, like, oh, my God, I already met this dude. And yeah. then, like, you were just coming to the store on some regular shit. And that was just kind of <laughs> mind-blowing at that I time. I remember one time, uh, I think I'd pissed you off because I had come to the back. And I think you were tired of everybody knocking on the back door. Yes. And I was just, like, you know, he had known who I was, but, like, just from that picture. And he's like, yo, just go around the I was like, okay, man. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And then when you really start blowing up, I was like, man, I'm glad. <laughs> Come on in. I was, well, I was like <laughs> glad that you didn't remember that it actually wasn't me, but it was somebody who was working for me at the time yeah. who was like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, like really fully like booted your ass out of the yeah. back of the store. Like, cause you try you banged on the door while I was doing an interview. <laughs> I understand now. That's that's messed up. And I would have been. Once you blew up, I was like, damn, I am glad he doesn't remember <laughs> that that incident. Or at yeah. least it seemed like nah, you didn't. Man. I, I I knew my place at that time. I, I knew, you know, what was good, man. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But um, um, okay, so just to like cover some of the greatest hits uh, from that time period, I was actually there when you got the G wagon. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. That's you were there. You yeah. drove me. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, uh, I, I, I don't think 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I drove you there, and then I remember we drove back to your house afterwards, and then I met your mom and mm. shit, like, right after that, and got <laughs> to kind of scope what was going on, because you had, like, your apartment, and then, like, around mm. the corner, you had an apartment for your mom, yeah. and, like, I'm realizing, like, oh, shit, he has taken on, like, a lot of fucking financial responsibilities yeah. in the short time that you had be, been famous, but... Mm. The G wagon, then then that became a big part of the lore because of the fact that you at one point, what did you do? You, oh, you, the I I keyed it, uh, yes, because the, it, yeah. because the keys had been taken away from you, right? Yeah, yeah, ba- uh, basically, yeah. I was I was crying about all that. <laughs> like these are things I'm talking about. Like if I could be me now, I, I would have that one. It wouldn't have happened, or it would have just been handled very differently. That I I call that moment like my Britney Spears shaving her head off moment, where it's just it's very similar. Where I'm just. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm screaming. I'm crying. I'm skiing. I wrote some crazy shit in that car, like evil. Like, I don't know, bro. I was like maybe going through like a psychosis, but uh, I laugh at shit like that. I got to, you know, it's, it's funny. If I don't, it, yeah, it would be bad. Right. But the G Wagon is gone oh, now. The G, you know, yeah, this is a good time to like clear up what happened to the G Wagon. Um, I did not sell it for drugs. I didn't. That was, yeah, people think that. That was, narrative was put out there at one point? Yeah, it was uh by WAC 100. I have nothing against <laughs> WAC 100 at all. Where did know? he get that information? I don't know. It, it's wrong information. What happened to the car was it needed to, it needed something needed, like it needed um service, service. Like mm-hmm. something was wrong with it. The window was all messed up. The Something was wrong with it. So my previous management had taken it back. And somewhere within, you know, a month goes by. I'm like, where's my car? You know, like. I like I it, it I was thinking wow this is taking a long time to fix like a little window thing or something, and uh, I started to realize that my my previous management and me were having like a really big fallout I'll call it that just a big fallout, um and we we settled we settled what happened with the G wagon out outside of of social media whatever, um it it it's still a it's still confusing though to me because I had a lot of money put into that car maybe not like paid off but enough to where it, you can't just take you know like the vehicle away but you know it is what it is um you know right yeah so okay that, that i was, just want people to know that it wasn't sold for drugs i was down bad but i was not gonna sell that for drugs that's a lot of drugs too. yeah i would have been a lot too probably a lot of <laughs> i would have i probably would have sold the car for drugs earlier on <laughs> if like you know right but okay so what actually happened with i'm assuming you and stat your former manager mm-hmm. haven't talked in a long time or no that at? no no we haven't um talked in a long time um you know the thing about that is obviously how I approached it, it was terrible. And I, I acknowledge that. At the time, like the lives and all that stuff, you know, when I was like, I had just, what what happened there is I felt, that was like another bottom point, not rock bottom, but I felt lied to. I just felt all these emotions. I, I was very angry um, at at things that they had done in the past. Um, and, and I really wish I could have reworded that just redid everything you know that was a terrible way to do it um but i was all you know mentally not stable so not blaming that but uh it was just a really another bad time Uh, how i feel now about stat and and all that i have nothing against him you Mm -hmm. know um i i understand what he had to do and i understand now um in a sober state of mind some of the things that i i still don't agree with some of them but I understand a good majority of, of what was going on. I just couldn't see that clearly at that moment in time. And as as this year has passed by and, and time has gone on, uh, I, I just want to grow as as not just an artist, but a human being, you know? I, and I, I think part of that is is I can't hold regret and, and this anger that I used to hold, you know, so, so much. Like, it would keep me up at night, like, the this, the anger I felt, but... It was misplaced, you know, and um, and I've, I've as I get older, I I, I learned that, that that was a mistake. You know? Well, because the last thing that me and you went back and forth on online <laughs> was actually about like I, I forget where it was. Was it on live or something where you basically like stories or something? You kind of got at stat and and accused him of like giving you drugs at a certain point or mm. acting like he was happy to sort of see you fucked up on drugs. Like, yeah. Do you regret saying that or is that something that you still? believe to be that, true that shit that's crazy i forgot i even said that but I'll, I'll clear it up now uh no i don't think he was happy at all i think i think you know deep down everybody wanted to to get me some like I, how you had brought up earlier how is this kid gonna get out of this spot you know 
Stat probably thought the same thing. I haven't talked to him in a while, but I could only imagine, you know, what kind of burden that was too on him, you know. Um, no, I don't think he was 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 happy to to see me in that place um, at all. No, I regret saying that. Yeah, because if he's just like I know Stat, and I think he's he's a businessman. He didn't Fair, sign yeah. you because he like wanted to hang out with you every day. He signed yeah. you because he saw it as like a, a way that he can make a bunch of money. And definitely and... didn't want to hang out with me. Every day. <laughs> right. Well, but just anybody like if you're nah, if you're in your forties yeah. and you're already a millionaire and you're in the music yeah. business and you're gonna sign this young ass kid in his early twenties, you're probably doing it because you want to make money. Yeah, yeah. And if I have an artist and I have the option of having them fucked up on pills <laughs> or not fucked on you're pills, choose I, the I'm <laughs> going sober all day yeah. because yeah, like may, like because people always say like, oh, if somebody's fucked up on drugs, it's easy to control them or whatever. Like maybe a little bit, like, like but certain, but not yeah, I don't really think, yeah, in I don't, most ways. Yeah, I don't see the the pros of keeping someone fucked up on drugs. Like where you're gonna gain too much from that. Yeah, because he wanted you to be going to shows and, yeah. and touring and intensely and working on the music, and it's hard to keep that stuff going yeah. seriously when you're loaded. Yeah, and I was notorious. I mean, some people, God bless their hearts, can do it better than maybe what I did, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, man, uh, Stat, I I love Stat, you know, and I appreciate what he did, what he did for me. Um, and I can now say that, you know, that I really do, I do love what he did and I appreciate him. Um, even though I would like to talk to him in the future, you know, I would like to, if he's open to it, to to just talk, have a conversation. I want him to to see where I'm at now. Mm. Maybe he does, man. You know, maybe he has seen it. I've done some interviews, but uh, yeah, I just want to let him know that I'm good. You know, mm. if, even if it means nothing to him, if it means a lot. Uh, and I, you know, obviously want to just talk about some things. So, you know, right, definitely, yeah. Like, okay, so when I went to that house in Corona, yeah, Corona, yeah, you had already left Colombia at that point because the way mm. I remember it going on yeah. was that. After you and Noah Cyrus dated, which mm. I don't believe that that was fake because I was around you guys. You were around, yeah. And it seemed like you That's guys were... a stupid were... conspiracy. Like, it was real, right. yeah. Okay, good. I, I'm glad because it seemed like you were genuinely, like, very into that, each other. Yeah, It yeah. might have lasted, like, a week and a half, but you were you were pretty Yeah, that was a home. genuine thing, yeah. Right, but then at a certain point, I think you said that Columbia had arranged it or whatever. Was there anything by them to sort of, like, introduce you or to try to... to no, no. There was, there was nothing to... That I believe to introduce us. I think... She and I, I'm not just saying I'm not flexing. I think she had DM me first, and then I DM'd her back. And when it was a, a real genuine connection at first, I think I went over to her house, and and um. But then what ended up happening later down the road when we were more established, I guess, as a couple, um, was we were both obviously signed at the time to Columbia Records. Mm -hmm. She had a different manager. I was with uh, Stat. Um, there there was like some some tomfoolery, some fuckery where I was trying to switch over to her management and it caused this big thing and maybe that's where that stems from but no the label uh, no i would no the label had nothing to do with that okay but i remember i had i, had I had probably a... did say some stuff like that you know i i've said a lot of just dumb shit in the heat of the moment that i just yeah didn't mean that's probably part of did that did you feel like she was using you for cloud at that time like after it ended no i think she was genuinely upset to be mm. honest yeah that goes back in i think she was genuinely upset i don't think that was like she's no cyrus i don't feel like she has to use did she catch you fucking other girls did she catch me fucking other girls yes <laughs> yeah i had to think about that probably i, I probably. can't even think of like a certain yeah i was a, i was a scumbag yeah right but yeah, I, you right. know if you know this industry you know that everybody's getting their own man right it happens yeah definitely is she doing well for herself i hear her name sometimes i don't really pay attention to I the don't, pop star world but yeah we're we left on good terms the last time i talked to her i think it was like over a year ago uh I don't really, I mean, yeah, I'd imagine she's doing, you know, big things. No Osiris, you know, it's just a right. name, you know. Yeah. I, I wish her nothing but the best, though. I got I got a lot of respect for her. She's a very, very talented artist. She was close to the SoundCloud scene at the time, because didn't she, she, she did a song with X at the yeah, time, Yeah, and right? then she would go on and uh, date, I think, Smoke Perp, too, remember? Wow. It, that was part of the SoundCloud, you know, if you think it's quite about quite a catalog. It. Yeah, it's quite. She was racking it up right there. Yeah, you got to respect that. wonder what her that. interest was, man. Keeping the community alive right there. Yeah. That's Shout real. out to uh, the whole family, man. I know they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh, do they? You think? Oh, Because you, oh, you kicked it with Billy Ray at the yeah, time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I brought him uh, some weed. We, yeah, we smoked together. Wow. 
He's a cool guy, man. He's a cool guy. And then I remember when he hopped on the Lil Nas X remix. That was yeah, and I mean, had a that was one before. Hit. Yeah, that was uh, when I had met him. They they were just about to do that the remix. Yeah, really. Yeah, because I remember thinking like, oh man, what an asshole. He does this song with Lil Nas X, <laughs> but he wouldn't hop on a Lil Xan <laughs> Lil song. Xan. That's fucked and up. Lil Nas X kind of looks like uh, Lil Xan if you look. Yeah. Nah, man, that, it's all love, man. It's all yeah, love. He probably made a good choice. Lil Nas X was going crazy for yeah, a while it's there. Probably probably good choice, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, what what. I, 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 just like I have to mention this is that it always stood out to me and I feel like I learned an important lesson through you don't do an impromptu meet and greet in a small town or city where like thousands of kids are going to come so, out because yeah. the city will send you a bill yes for the helicopters that have to come it out happened to you. <laughs> and the, yeah but then when when x died yeah we basically did the exact same thing that you did On which is we the, said yeah. hey we're going to do a, a you know a vigil and you know couple thousand people I came saw i that. think it was insane it totally like destroyed the entire block luckily though there wasn't really much like violence or property destruction and they never billed us but i remember the cops coming by and telling us like hey don't ever do that again yeah and we were like okay yeah so sorry. wait did you or not did you get a bill from the we did not but i remember you telling me that oh, you yeah, got a bill they, of like a hundred grand right? yeah but see this is they how they got me was they were like oh we need to get you out of here uh you know for safety but just that's how they were gonna get my information follow me to where i was going mm. they didn't want me to leave from the spot so they you know couldn't get in contact yeah they will bill you for all that stuff man it's wild though because like in the case of the x uh, memorial mm. it was kind of like well how are you gonna bill me or or charge me for this when <laughs> And I didn't know that yeah, this many yeah. people were going to come. Yeah. Now, they could say, like, you should have known. Like, yeah, you could have like, guessed You know it. who you are. Come on. <laughs> in reality, though, I, I did know a lot of people were going to come, but I didn't know. I thought it might be, like, there you was know, so, 800. I remember seeing all that. There was a lot. I think more than, like, 2,000 people, bro. And everybody lot. was just jumping off the roof. And, like, I remember there being a viral clip of everybody hanging off of this one car. Yeah. Like, 10 people holding onto a car, <laughs> just hanging off of it, driving down the street. You know, and, and that, that just goes into the broader sense of what I meant with No Jumper being such a big aspect of of the culture and especially sound called culture like like moments like that like the visual everybody remembers that moment I mean, you know rest in peace to x a legend obviously um but that was an important moment was that visual i remember and i still see you know yesterday was the the anniversary it was fifth anniversary yeah. i know that fucked me up just thinking about the fact yeah. it's been five years Isn't that crazy imagine where x would be now like musically <sighs> just or yeah musically man what what would we what kind of sounds would he be making, man? I've had that moment many times where I think you used oh, to manage him for like, uh, yeah, I, yeah, fake like, manage, but fake yeah. man. Hey, that's still cool, bro. Like, I remember that. That's another thing, man. It's like these moments in 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 history, bro. They're 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 crazy. But you look back on moments like that, and I'm like, oh, when he said that he wanted me to be his manager, I should have dropped everything in my life and just gone to Florida. Shit, and I never, just I never thought about posted that. up and and really tried to do that at the time. I was so focused on No Jumper that there was. I but, remember even having a yeah. conversation with my girl and being like, I might have to really like go to Florida <laughs> and spend hella time there because he wants me to manage him and her kind yeah. of like realizing like, oh, so that's probably going to be it for us. Because like <laughs> you're going you, to Florida. Yeah. Like shit's yeah. like how how is our relationship going to be a thing still if you're just going to go to Florida and hang out yeah. with a bunch of crazy you ass know, SoundCloud when you, kids. When you, yeah. When you say that you should have dropped your, your stuff because obviously nobody knew how like exactly, how, you yeah. know where he was going to be. But also. If you would have dropped your stuff, do you do you think maybe it wouldn't have worked out, and then you would have been mad that you had left the no jumper thing? In Most state? likely, yeah. Yeah, because like I feel like <laughs> yeah. realistically that maybe you know Florida is a crazy place, bro. Yeah, but well, if you could have got in, obviously, and it was like a yeah, that that's a crazy. I don't think I could have made everything a tight ship and had it running smoothly, especially since I didn't even know what a manager did at the time. I remember hearing about Solomon, uh, the guy yeah. who signed him, and mm -hmm. him being on that revenge tour. And just like losing his mind, being so I've unbelievably heard. stressed out the whole time because it was yeah. so chaotic. And think, you remember that? Like people Bro, were getting I've heard beat so up, many he got knocked stories. out on stage every night. It was fucked. I've heard so many stories uh, from the revenge tour that I can't even count of like just crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah, but I yeah no, uh, you would have to deal with a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. You, yeah. You've already had to deal with a lot of shit, so I I can't imagine, man. Yeah, that would have been. That would have been wild. Maybe man. a good call. And people forget, too, just, like, how controversial he mm. was during his life, too. Like, I remember having an unbelievable amount of pressure being put on me Which is crazy. on Twitter from, yeah. like, people to denounce him. Which is crazy. Uh, it's because he had just gotten out. I think it, that's right when, yeah, that happened. He had just gotten out, and that's when you guys linked up. Uh, yeah, you know— and then what Vic Mensa, the whole Vic Mensa thing, uh, do you remember well, that? Well, that was after he passed. Yeah, 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 but I'm just talking about any anybody, you know, that tries to denounce, uh, I don't agree with them at all. I think everybody has problems that, that 
you know, in their, everybody has skeletons in their closet. They have things that they might not be too proud of, but it's about like just getting better, working mm-hmm. past that. We've all made mistakes. Like, it is crazy though, too, because when I watched the X documentary maybe a year ago yeah. when that came out, that seeing like what that girl Geneva went through, mm-hmm. it just really made me realize like, oh, me and a lot of other people really like turned a blind eye to whatever the fuck was going on with her yeah. because of the fact that it was convenient for us and nobody wanted to you know necessarily like dig into the details of what was happening and when you when you look at the fact that she wasn't even able to have like a normal job and she was having his fans show up at the donut shop she was working at and shit like it did make me feel like you know like like I don't know. Like I, I don't know what I would have done because at the end of the day, my allegiance to somebody that I have mm-hmm. a friendship with yeah. is not going to allow me to like go on social media and mm-hmm. say like, "Hey, I disavow this behavior." Yada yeah. yada. I'm just not going to do that to him. But I don't know. Like I definitely could have been more caring about whatever the fuck she was going on too. Yeah, I, I I'm right there with you. <laughs> I could have. Uh, there's a lot of things I could have done differently. Yeah, definitely. What What was your relationship with Aaron Carter? Aaron Carter. I don't. I think we had talked. I think we had we had texted a little bit. Um, I'd seen him on your your podcast. Okay. We didn't like. I wouldn't say we knew each. I mean, we had messaged. I think a couple times, but nothing of subs, like substance. Oh, okay. You know? I thought you guys had tapped in more. No, no. I, it's sad what happened to bro, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's terrible. Yeah, I mean that's. But I, you know what's crazy? I first. I mean, obviously everybody knows Aaron Carter from uh, you know growing up and stuff, but. Um, when I first saw him, like, I guess, resurface, it was on this podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of people, too. Yeah. He had a whole wave where he was just showing up all the time, acting crazy as fuck. Yeah, and he, he, he came <laughs> here one time, mm-hmm. like, yeah, and I still have this big-ass painting, this clown painting in my room Legend or in my head. office that he just dropped off, which a bunch of people pointed out after the fact, like, oh, this is what people do before they, like, kill themselves or overdose or whatever is that they start giving away all their possessions and shit shit. so i always kind of wonder like did he if he knew did he have a hunch that his time was ticking at that point i i think yeah because i mean i wasn't around him but he was pretty messed up right on like stuff or you would saw him or i mean he would always say that he was sober but then he wouldn't be acting sober at all and i think his version of sober was involved being on a shitload of medication (laughs) that he was actually getting from his doctors and shit yeah so he almost felt like it was validated you know like it wasn't like almost like an addiction or something yeah and it's weird when i think about it too because like i got hit up by this documentary crew to do uh to do like the documentary that came out a little while ago about him and i'm just at the point where i don't even trust anyone like in the media to like tell this kind of thing i'm like i I didn't even respond because i was like they're gonna try to turn me into the villain and i could see how they could spin some some stupid narrative that like would paint you know yeah because he would come on here and be on the fucking funniest time possible (laughs) of just being hilarious being ridiculous being super extreme coming in with a girl saying that he was about to get married to her two (laughs) days later they're not even talking yeah yeah and you know we're approaching that and like you know having a good time with it and laughing about it and it's like it only seems fucked up once he's gone like soon after and it's like oh he was in a a period where he needed help and you were just laughing at him and it's like fuck i I, I didn't know that we were dealing he, with his last he, days yeah. there, you know? It, it's it's fucked up, but, I mean, you, you couldn't have known. Like, nobody had known if he was going to, you know, obviously it was an accidental overdose, I believe, right? Yeah. Something like that. You know, I don't know too many details, but you never know when someone's someone's going to go. Or Of course, there's some things that you probably wish you could have done differently. Mm. It's just the way it is, you know? Do you have any, uh like famous person encounters or like just wild things that happened to you uh during your rise that stands out to you now as just being kind of ridiculous like hard to believe that it's even real uh like in a like any type of way really yeah good Uh, or bad good or bad uh things that have happened i mean i I remember uh hooking up with riley reed was (laughs) was a milestone because as as a teenager it was like Man, bro, you know, you just jerking off to her thinking Right. I'm just jerking off there, whatever, you know. But then like actually getting to meet her, it was it was it was cool. That was probably a first like I know I'd done a lot of cooler stuff probably, but that was like my first like wow, like what is life? You know, like life is so weird. Like like what? Like and then Did I introduce you guys? I don't remember, but might, I think I, I did. You might have, yeah, you might have. Because I remember her I don't know how did we meet? Because she actually has a a a, a clip on impulsive where yeah. she describes hooking up with you as if it was, you know, not great. Basically yeah. saying your dick game was trash. Uh, how, <laughs> how does that hit? I probably was. I was off Zans at the time. I remember I, her kind of telling me that I, at the I, time as I, well. You know, it, it was like I 
I had a problem like getting it up when you're off Zans, bro. And mm-hmm. I speak to a lot of people back then. I'm fine now, but yeah, you know, we, we had some problems definitely. I still appreciate it, and I think she's a nice person. So yeah, no, she's yeah, cool. He's cool. Because I still, me and my girl will go, and like our kids will. Did she hang get out. married? Yes. How does that work? <laughs> she stopped doing porn. Okay, I, I know, but uh, she, does she only do like girl porn then? She does stuff with her husband as well. Okay, yeah, I was just curious. Uh, yeah, I saw her get married. But we hang out on some super normal, regular normal. ass shit with oh, our kids, yeah. which is kind of wild just to think about. Like, because even watching that clip on Impulsive of her talking about her time spent with you, I was just like, whoa, it's kind of wild for me to see her still kind of playing like the the porn star role whereas yeah. like i had her on the podcast maybe a year ago mm-hmm. and she was kind of just acting like a real like person a normal, like because i haven't that's even, the version of her i know at yeah this point, see, you know? i don't know i i probably don't know that version to right. be honest i mean yeah we had a little you know we'd interact and stuff but it felt like maybe that persona was on i don't know i, I you know it is what it is uh yeah it was probably not the best back then <laughs> she was looking for love with pump at the time too you know she it was weird because i felt like it was pump then someone else, then me. I feel like there was like a list. There's always like a list, you know, mm. like like same with like Tana Mojo. I think mm. she had someone with like Pump too, right? Or, I don't even know, bro. It's all. I, I think. Yeah, like maybe. right. Like, isn't it just blend in? At a I certain remember point? her being insanely thirsty for Pump and like desperately trying backstage to get me to hook Novo. her up. With, backstage at the Backstage at the Novo. You filmed that too, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I did a vlog called "The Day in the Life of Low mm. Pump," and what I she. Saw, yeah. She was like so thirsty to get backstage and even take a photo with him. That's and what shit. I saw. Yeah, it, yeah, and um, and it seemed like that was very briefly lived. And then I think I was next in line, and that <laughs> that was more of like a that lasted longer, I guess you would say. Yeah, but it's always like a, a line, bro. It's it's fucking weird. Man. Right, but the weird thing with uh Tana is that I saw a clip of her on some podcast where she was kind of. She wasn't trying to shit on you, but H three H three was kind of trying to like nudge yeah. her in the direction mm. of like you know, saying something bad yeah, about you. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because it's like, I remember you being very excited, Tana, to spend time with Lil Xan. Exactly. Like she was geeked about hooking up with thank you at the time. You, thank you. And, and and where our relationship stands now is like, there. obviously she said a lot of fucked up shit, even, you know, in the past, whatever. It, it's part of her brand. You know, mm. it's it gets clicks. It gets views when you can title something. You know, for some reason, and she understands this, that people are still interested in anything Tana slash Lil Xan related, mm-hmm. and she's a very smart, uh, very smart businesswoman. I'll, I'll, I'll commend her on that. So she knows how to to use her brand, you know, to her benefit. Mm. Yeah, we're we're on good terms. I understand why she says certain things, you know. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Um. Okay. But this is the other crazy thing that she said is, <laughs> well, she said you ate her ass. Yeah. I, yeah. I probably did. Yeah. Any other famous asses you might have ate at the time, or do you have any recollection of Tana's ass that you want to? It was nice. Do you, I think, I think you remember it was good. the flavor? It was good. It was good. Like, you know, she's she's a clean girl. She's a very... Strawberry. Strawberry. Skittles. <laughs> I don't Skittles. know. Skittles. <laughs> Whatever. Nah. Um, yeah, I've probably eaten a lot of girls' asses out, too, in the past. Okay. That's I don't good. do that so much anymore. Though. That's a Xanax thing, though. Yeah, I think... Is it? It might be, right? If you fucked up I on bars, like, you'll definitely eat an ass. Isn't that... I feel like there was, like, a, a very demon part of me that doesn't exist anymore now. It's probably the drugs, huh? Yeah, well, she even said that in the thing about you. She's like, you know, when you're fucked up on Zans, you'll suck toes, you'll do whatever. Like, everything kind of seems like a good idea. Everything goes. You're very open to suggestion, whereas when you're sober, you have, like, in your mind, like, oh, these are the things I'm not into. Yeah. And then that just goes away. And it's it's funny because that's how I am more now. I'm more like, like, uh, yeah, I'm not as adventurous, I guess, maybe as on the drugs. I'm very more tamed and... and, uh, but the, the best thing she said about you was she said that you had a maid who was your cousin, but that it was actually just like a girl, another girl you were that, fucking, and you were having her come over and clean your house right in front of this other girl that you were fucking in yeah. Tana. I used to have uh, some wild, wild things happen, man. That 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 played out multiple times, man, with different girls. I was a I was a wild person. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Um, Okay, and then I also wanted to say, okay, so recipes of P and B rock. That was somebody you had yeah. a real Rest relationship with, and even when I was watching the Stevo interview that mm. you did, which was probably like your last major interview, yeah. you were saying like, oh yeah, like I got an album coming out, and P and B rock might hop on one of the songs or whatever. So you guys had an actual friendship. Yeah, that was before he had passed. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That was that. Well, I, it's not gonna happen anymore, obviously. But um, right. th- yeah, there was a time where he had sent me a, a couple. Um, of opens that I still haven't heard. I can't wait for people if they. I want that to come out no matter what because they were very good records. Um, P and B Rock. 
everybody, you know, when he passed away, unfortunately, you saw everybody posting, you know, their own, uh, you know, stories with them or clips or photos of them. It seemed like he had touched so many people. Like, people I didn't even realize, you know, were posting, like, this person. I was like, wow. Um, He was such a nice fucking dude. Mm. The last time uh, we had hung out was Las Vegas New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve. And uh, I was in uh, my friend's, like, uh, ironically, another G-Wagon, not mine. We're we're driving to the club, and you know it's it's none of us are drunk or anything. We're smoking weed. We're bumping uh, some of our music. I think he was playing some unreleased. And uh, I get pulled over by uh, the cops because I was like, I guess I was going to a hundred. I didn't realize. Uh, I have at this point in my life, I have a suspended license too. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the car with me, P and B Rock, and his like two friends. You know, I'm like, this is gonna be interesting. So we get pulled over. And and obviously I'm like I'm screwed. I don't want to tell them I don't have a suspended license. And I get out the car. They tell me to get out, and then I literally just talk them out. Like I literally talk them into just letting me go. It took like 25 minutes. I was like, please, officer, we're just some rappers. Like they didn't know who I was at all. We're just feeling ourselves. We're playing our music. It's New Year's. Uh, and by the like, oh man, it worked. Like 30 minutes later, he it was like a slap on the wrist, maybe a ticket, but. Uh, they let me go, and and that was just the most memorable point from our last encounter. And Damn. He, he used to call me Speed Racer after that. Really? Yeah, he wouldn't ever let me drive uh, the whip if I was an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> man, because it's like a lot of times I interview people, and then I never really see him again, or I'll see him, mm-hmm. and it's whatever, but I would always see him in the airport. I've seen him like three different times in the He's airport. He's one of those people you see at the airport a lot, yeah. Yeah. I, I have that with, um, I've seen Anderson Pack a couple of times, and then uh, mm. Action Bronson I've seen a few times in the airport, too. Really? I don't even think I ever said hi. I was just like, oh, look, there's <laughs> that person. <laughs> you should definitely have said yeah, hi. I know, yeah, I know, huh? Okay. Um... Okay. Um, there was this other thing that came out that was uh, kind of viral for like a day. You were supposed to tour with this band, the Dropout Kings, mm-hmm. and then uh, they they framed it like basically you just fucked off on the tour, mm-hmm. and then you put out a statement that said, I dropped off the tour because your management and booking agents were taking advantage of me. Your team dropped the ball. Your team did not have any accommodations or travel or anything a tour should. You just wanted to promote your homies under my name, and we tried to work it out, but your team is obviously new at this. Yes. So how did that go down? That was, that all stemmed from um, just, you know, business. Like, it was bad business. Mm. What what they, I, I didn't have the management I have now. That was just before I had linked up with my new management, which, uh, you know, was very good. Um, I was still kind of like, I don't know how you describe it. I, I didn't have a manager at that time. I had, like, my friend who's a good friend of mine who's also a producer that was almost stepping in as a manager kind of part, I guess. And he had said all that. I'm not putting no no bad things on him. Uh, he didn't know what he was getting to either. But we had kind of formed this whole idea of going on tour with the, uh, we didn't even know it was with people at first. Like they didn't even mention that until down the road, um, and and it just led. And then I got new management led into that. They started to uncover that these things weren't right. These people weren't as legit as they were. The the money wasn't there for traveling just to get around. It was very unorganized. So of course he he did the the rational thing of just pulling out completely before we you know went on this clusterfuck of a tour. I don't even know what it would have been. And he could see that I was still in the early stages of like getting sober and I was doing good. So felt like also you need to going back out on the road is the worst thing right now, you know, mm. uh, to someone trying to stay sober. So it was a mixture of, of mainly bad business on their part and 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 just wanting to to use that time to, to rest, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. But they, you know, they have probably a different version of events, but that's on them. But it's, people kind of try to use it as part of this narrative of, of like the downfall of or like oh nobody was going to go to the shows yeah. anyway so that's why he pulled out is there yeah. any truth to that or no i i there's no truth i i didn't even see uh any ticket counts at any any of the shows it, it felt like it was so early that that there wasn't any it, it was so unorganized there was no how many ticket sales there the the lady had like i don't know if she had tricked us she yeah, it was very just unprofessional, and, and we realized that, and that's why we pulled out. Right. But I never saw uh, whether there was people showing up or not. I don't know. I can't speak to that. Like, I never saw 
any numbers, you know. Do you feel like, you know, you're kind of past the point in your career where you should be necessarily doing random janky ass tours with bands that yeah. are like I yeah. I don't know if they're legit or not. I don't know how many I, fans yeah, I they have or I don't whatever. know either. Um I don't know much about them, but that just goes into more of the the whole thing of we didn't at first we didn't even realize that there was gonna be a band on it. That was almost slipped under. It was because she was managing. Those were her artists that were put on. So she kind of slipped that in like, yo, we're gonna do this tour and then also here's some good PR for my, you know, and that's what it felt like a hundred percent. So that's another big reason we pulled out. Is that was yeah, it was just a bad, bad deal. And then there was there was another clip of you actually eating shit on stage. Was that <laughs> <laughs> that was uh recently though. That was relatively recently. Yeah, yeah. that was like a, a few months ago. I, I did a show, uh, I opened up for Polo G mm-hmm. in uh Fargo, North Dakota. And it's like some Looney Tune shit, bro. It's it's you see the one fucking thing of water, like the banana peel. I right. hit that slip. Uh everybody thought it was super funny. I actually stopped the show. I, I was like, yo. We got to stop the show. And then I made a joke about myself. And I'm like, oh, we can keep going. You actually got fucked up there? What do you mean? Uh, When you when you fell there? Oh, like- fell? No, I hurt my ankle a little bit. Um, But it was more I had to play this off like like I, w- I didn't look that stupid, you know. Uh, I'm actually glad I fell because it helped. It, everything that goes viral just ends up helping, you know. Really? Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad like I actually ate shit in a weird way. Because when's the last time you actually put music out? Because in that in that Steve-O interview, you were acting like you were about to put out music soon, yeah. but then it hasn't actually happened since then, right? Yeah, that was um that was like the Wild West, too, where I didn't really have a, a manager figure or a team, so I was kind of just spitballing, freestyling, kind of some things that I wanted to do. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, obviously, I I, uh, I got good management, and they, they uh, told me, you know, this is how you got to do things differently. You know, you can't just, yeah, drop this, do this, do this. You know, it's it's got to be planned, and... And we've ultimately decided that now is the time to 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 get back into it, you know. Right. And so, we plan on dropping, you know, new music at this point every month. So you're gonna be just dropping music videos and kind of trying to warm shit up before you yeah, drop a project. Yeah, I really, I really am excited for people to hear this next record I'm putting out because it is, it's, it's what I wish I could have been making previously too. Right. Um, it, it's very mature. Uh, it's, you know, it's not, you know, the similar topics. I guess it's, it's very mature in. It, it's just like the evolution. If, if you're a fan of my music, it's, it's exciting, man. It's just the evolution of everything. Right, definitely. Yeah, that's good to hear that you're excited about it and everything. Um, Who tried to charge you 200 k for a feature? No, yeah, I, I love that I can uh, finally talk about this. That I was in Spain when that happened. Nobody, that wasn't about a feature at all. Oh. That was actually talking about someone charging that price for a show, okay. like to perform. Uh, I'm good friends with, I won't name them obviously, but I'm good friends with these people that had told me that this one artist who's on the come up, I'll give him that, had tried to charge them 200K. Mm-hmm. And I was drunk in Spain. I had a sold out show. I was just kind of, I didn't think that was going to be viral. I was just kind of venting on my story. And then when I get back to America, obviously I didn't have service on the way. So that whole time that I was in the air, that whole story was formulating. So I couldn't get my two cents in. Uh, no, that was just me echoing. A frustration of my friend, and, and it had nothing to do with the feature. It was uh him charging that for a show. Oh, okay. But everybody uh, was played. It Yeet? It. Everybody played it like it was. If, no, if Yeet were to charge me, that's understandable. I feel like he could charge two hundred k for a I, show. I, I mean, mean, no, no, it's like a feature, maybe. Oh yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's a lot. I don't know. I, I don't feel like that. I wouldn't be that. No, I didn't seem like that. No. I mean, Yeet. If if we found out that you was charging somebody two hundred k for a feature, it's like the same thing with you. Like if I had found out that at a certain point you had been able to charge that much, it's like yeah. If you're at that moment in mm. your career where you can charge that much, you better fucking do it because yeah. realistically, that part of your career is probably yeah. not gonna last forever. Not everybody gets to be you know Drake or Playboy K, Cardi yeah. or someone who has like a ten year fucking career where there's only not a handful popping, of you know? those handful of those uh, rappers. No, nah, like see if if he would have done that, shout out to he, I would have understood. I would be like, yeah, it's you know, it's popping. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Just misunderstanding. Definitely. So, okay, what what is important to you at this point in life? Are we ever gonna see like Lil Xan, the Family Man? Are you ever gonna <laughs> impregnate one of these girls or what? Yeah, that's that's the goal, right? Um, I I feel for the future, you know, I I just want to keep growing, whether it's just musically or I want to do a lot of different things. I want to get into acting. I want to get into producing. Um. I want to get into just playing. I want to do all that. I want to do all the things that I feel like I was I was robbed of during my previous thing. I was so busy. I was on drugs all the time. Now it's like now it's my time to just be me and to show people that I'm not 
that crazy uh, kid like I used to be. And I'm not all fucked up on drugs again. Uh, I, it's almost like in a like a second chance, you know. Uh, whether people give me a second chance or not, I'm here to show them that you know, it, it it's worth your time to to check it out, you know. Definitely. Are you working on the music with mm. anybody in particular, or is it all you? Because I feel like mm. I feel like you are likable and you're a star, and people at Thank the you. end of the day, if the music lives up to the fact that you have a dope personality and a and an image that's clearly captivating to people, mm. I feel like there will that people will be open to this like you yeah. know narrative of you kind of switching your life around. Yeah. It's just gonna have to like really be accompanied by the music like being really music great. Music has like, to be good. Yeah. You know the 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 great part of your career where you you blew the fuck up was because Betrayed was a really fucking great song mm-hmm. and it's like you know I think then if as the album came out and the album wasn't very well received mm-hmm. that's when everybody started hating on you and it's kind of like that for most artists you know like as soon as Chance the Rapper put out an album that people didn't like it didn't matter that Chance the Rapper was this Had like beloved acid, figure yeah. before that you know yeah you, yeah it's 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 just part of the game you know we all know we get into when we sign up for this. Um, that I, I didn't like that album very much either. Um I, I remember I, listening to it and being like, damn. You know, okay. what what I will say <laughs> about that album though is I don't really like it that much, but I will acknowledge like uh it is a classic in the sense that like you see the cover, mm. uh, you know, it's a very you know, it's just a rememberable SoundCloud thing, you know, it's stored in that bucket. It was a moment in time. Yeah, it was a moment in time. So I I I give it that credit. Like it's it's a classic in that sense. Uh, it was it was just mismanaged, you know, bad engineers on it, um, bad communication. It was just that album was just a uh, everything of bad communication, just uh, mental instability, just put together, and obviously it wasn't well received. Um, this time, this next project is what I wish I could have made my first project. Like, yeah, it's a classic, whatever. I, I this is my in my own mind my first body of work like that matters, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that one had betrayed and. Colorblind and all that. Those were good songs, cool songs. But this one is is the one that that matters. Because Betrayed was all you. It's not like you had anybody yeah, helping yeah, you with yeah. music back no, then, right? No, no. Betrayed, man, I wrote Betrayed on, on like a fucking janky-ass washing machine in like a trap garage, you know? Uh, all myself. I, I didn't think I'd fucking created the best thing since like sliced bread or anything. I was like, oh, personally tastes like Skittles. Like, this is funny, you know what I mean? Uh, and then we did it. It was so simple. It wasn't like, oh, we're making this magnum opus of a fucking record. It was like, oh, we're just kids making music and people liked it you know so mm. definitely but so are you working with anybody or like oh, have yeah, you, my do you bad. have producers that you feel like are capable of helping mm-hmm. you to sort of like elevate your shit or songwriters yeah. maybe yeah a, a lot of things you'll notice uh obviously in the music coming up is that there's a lot more instruments a lot more guitars pianos things that i always wanted to implement in the past uh but just couldn't for for some reason or another there's a lot of it's music i love instruments and and live instruments and and yeah as far as who i'm working with just the same people you know uh, no big names or really anything a couple big names as features but uh just the same people that have stuck by me and um and keep me down they're good people you know that's good to hear and i mean i'm just super happy about you being sober thank you it is like with the face tattoos and shit i feel like people (laughs) are gonna it's gonna take a while before people accept that you're sober like you're gonna have to probably get the word sober tattoo yeah. in your fucking forehead right or something there, yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> I might. Just, you just kind of give off a zanned out vibe regardless yeah. but as soon as you walked in here i was like oh that like i can feel the energy yeah. that you're you're not like living in this fucking cloud, yeah no, you know? no i used to come in here uh sauce man fall asleep on the table yeah. yeah uh like i said i feel i feel really good you know and and whether people will give me a second chance or not i'm just here to to plead my case uh to to um explain some things that had happened in the past and i appreciate you for letting me on and to mm. you know explain that obviously um and and just yeah show people the right side of me that you know that that they didn't really get to see in the past yeah definitely yeah because i mean it's it's motivational to me too like i've been sober since january 2019 nice. besides drinking a little bit here and there and yeah. i actually stopped smoking weed like a month ago nice, which yeah. is kind of a weird thing that i'm still not yeah. a, i'm not sure it's gonna last forever <laughs> yeah but, yeah uh, that yeah. might be a hard one for me too yeah definitely yeah. but i mean just seeing anybody from that time period who's able to sort of elevate and and get past the the shit that you were on before mm. is very motivational to me so. thank you that means a lot to me man yeah no doubt so uh, when is this album going to actually be out? Uh, we're thinking September, right? Yeah, September. And the, the new single uh, comes out on the 30th of this month. And, uh, and yeah, we have a show in L.A. Uh, July 9th. Yeah, so that'll be When's cool. that? Where are you playing? 
Uh, set, we're doing a small show, 1720. Is that the venue? Oh, yeah, that 1720? place? Okay. That's yeah, where yeah. I threw my Xanarchy on everything like, way back in the day. Yeah, but um, more a small. We're starting off, obviously, small rooms, intimate rooms, and we're just going to build up again, you know? Definitely. I mean, it's, it's crazy when I think about it where there was a couple of different little Zan shows that I went to, including one where it was it was some like EDM group or some shit. Uh yeah. Um hippie it was at the Novo. Hippie sabotage. Hippie yeah, sabotage. Hippie that sabotage. was it. Yeah. And I remember like you coming out and the audience, like your <laughs> young Hispanic female fan Crazy. base just going absolutely you insane. You have to like insane. Like hold your ears like they scream uh so loud. Yeah, that was a good show. It's, it makes me wonder where a lot of those girls are at now. <laughs> they're, they're still, still probably sticking around. Still what, what are they doing? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, eating hot Cheetos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, hopefully not overdosing. Yeah, not overdosing. Was no. oh, that was one thing that Tana said. She she basically <laughs> kind of said in that H three she clip that you that the hot Cheetos thing was like a cover up for you <laughs> overdosing on other things. Was that true at any point? No, bro. The the Cheeto thing. Um, I never used the word overdose. Uh, it was um, I had I had gone to the hospital because I actually did eat too many hot Cheetos. Funny enough, and. I threw up a little bit of blood, not nothing crazy, but just enough to make me think, oh, I should go to the hospital. I'm going on tour tomorrow. So I went to the hospital, and then I wanted people to think, yo, I'm st I wanted them to know I'm still going on tour. So I made this dumb video saying, yo, it's all good. Uh, I just went to the hospital for Cheetos, blah, 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 whatever. I go to sleep. And then the first blog the next day had somehow titled overdose. And then every blog after that just picked up that same keyword overdose. And it just became like this fucking big stupid thing and i'm like okay when we, when we ran with it obviously right yeah because it was like too good we're like we got to run with this and it just you know we didn't expect no that wasn't <sighs> you would think that was like some pre-planned marketing shit no that was accidental like all accidental and we couldn't believe how many people cared you know what i mean but that's a certain level of fame where the blogs and the media will actually like come up with the viral storyline for you even yeah. if it's not really that connected yeah. to what you actually said mm. but i mean i can say i moved here from the east coast and one thing that kind of surprised me back in like 2010 was like oh there are hot cheetos in every fucking store it's, and yeah. i see kids eating hot cheetos right? everywhere i go bag, like it's bag, so bag. popular <laughs> and when i lived in new york and shit that was not a fucking thing granted yeah. like much lower percentage of do you Mexican think it's people. like that now though with the hot Cheetos? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not really in the streets to like monitor yeah, the hot yeah. Cheetos consumption, like but probably. Oh, there's probably hot Cheetos. It's just like you see that everywhere, especially out here though. Yeah. I think that that that's I like, don't need <laughs> them that much anymore though. I, I don't like them that much. I think they're all right. If they're around, yeah. I will eat it. And, but I don't find them to be like that hot. That's why I was always kind of confused no, about not the hot. idea of you overdosing nah. on it. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> it, it uh it burns like the the stomach lining, and that's it's like acidic. Well, I will see people who work here eating a bag of hot Cheetos at like ten in the morning, and I realize that that's their breakfast. Yeah, and that, that that's not a yeah, that's not a concerning. substantial breakfast right there. Yeah, it used to be my breakfast. Get some eggs or bacon yeah, or something. something. Get a something croissant. Like Anything. Starbucks. Get some. <laughs> yeah. Get a peanut butter bar. <laughs> peanut butter. That's oh. what we need. Yeah. Some protein. All right, Lil Zane, I appreciate you. Thank and you. are you thinking about changing to Diego at any point, or have you kind of forgot about that plan for yeah, now? Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people know me as uh, Diego as well, and they, they've heard that in the past. I, I just want to keep it open to both right now. You mm. know, maybe one day we'll commit to, to fully changing it. But for right now, I like Diego. I like being called Zan. Maybe not the Lil. It just seems a little corny. Mm. Um, yeah, I call me either or. You know, I like both of them for right now. Big Zan. Big Zan. Actually, I'm, yeah, we should do Big Zan. I like that better. You can do that. Yeah. All right, Lil Zan. I appreciate you, dog. Thank you, man. Much love. Thank you for coming through. Thank you, bro. Lil Zan. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, and subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Bow.